Hello trumpet players, we're going to talk a little bit in this video about forcing technique to surface. You know, sometimes I say stuff that um, can get me in trouble, right? It's because of my personality, that the way I think. I don't think like other people, so I say stuff that can be offensive. Um, and I remember writing in one of my books that about a... I even quoted, I even quoted a, a famous jazz musician, and I said that I didn't agree. And, you know, to quote a famous jazz musician and say you don't agree, well, you must not be one of those <laughs> uh, jazz worship people. So, but what the issue was, was dealing with technique. And we have this, sometimes we have this idea that being technical automatically means that you're not musical. And the problem with that kind of thinking is that those two things are not connected. Not well, okay, so they are connected, but not in the way that people are thinking. It's actually the opposite of what they're thinking. But yes, you can be technical and musical at the same time. But here's the irony of it. Here's the irony, is that if you have limited technique, you draw attention to the technique that you have. Let that sink in. So these people, there are actually people out there who avoid developing technique in their playing because they don't want to sound unmusical like those really really technical people who sound unmusical and in the effort that they invest to sound more musical by not being technical <laughs> they end up drawing attention to their technique it's the irony of music <laughs> so I actually think it's funny in an ironic way, right? Um, so let's let's dig into this a little bit, right? Let's first look at the fact that being musical and being technical are two separate things. When I was in El Paso, I was in the, the El Paso Symphony for two seasons, <clears throat> and we used to get upcomers, well, I, I, I remember somebody saying that we were on the B circuit, whatever that means. I don't even know if that was a thing. There's a lot of stuff I was told in the 80s that I don't believe anymore because um, a lot of it ended up being urban myth, urban, urban legend, right? Um, but yes, we, that, I was told we were on the B circuit. So guys who were either washed up at the end of their careers or the opposite, people who were just getting started. So, for example, we had Joshua Bell when he was like 16 years old. Okay. Um, and But then we had this amazing list of old semi-retired musicians who you know the music that would just drip out of their playing was I would have you know I would have not traded that aspect of my orchestral career which was short lived I would not have traded that for anything because I got to see and play with, in a lot of cases, some of 
the most musical musicians doing some of the most musical performance. But, you know, it wasn't so much that their technique was less. I mean, think about it. Someone at the... They've, they've already done this thousands of times. So it's not so much that their technique was gone. Oh, as, as another example of someone who, we, who played with our orchestra as an upcomer, we had Wynton Marcellus as, as well. So, yeah, people like that, Joshua Bell. But, but these older guys, the ones who were at the end of their careers, were far more inspirational to me because of how they sat at the piano or the cello or whatever it was they were playing, and it was gorgeous. And you didn't... I, you know, you would hear some people, the ignorant people, you would hear some people say that they'd lost their technique because they played slower. But the truth is, when you have that much technique, it's all slow. <laughs> right? right? <laughs> so the only reason you would want to go quote-unquote faster is to impress the crowd, and I think at that age you just don't care about that anymore. So yes, you have people here that technique was their whole career. And I, I really have to believe that the, the slower tempos, other than that, their execution was, what it, from the way I remember it, other than that, their execution was actually impeccable and you can't tell me i'm of the opinion today that impeccable execution even at slower tempos is the greatest technical requirement let that sink in How do I say this more clearly? Because what we're talking about is minutia, right? To be that accurate, to be that, that, um, when the execution is that good and the music is also super, super expressive, that is an increased level of technique, not a diminished level of technique. That's something I don't think people quite understand. I, you know what? I, I accuse people who think this stuff of shallow thinking. Right? It's knee-jerk shallow thinking. It's the same knee-jerk shallow thinking that... Um, and when I say shallow, how shallow am I talking? I'm talking amoeba level, protozoa level thinking, okay? This is the kind of thinking that gets us in trouble at the government level. This is the kind of thinking that gets us in trouble with our finances, okay? Knee jerk, um, something happens, so this is going to happen in response automatically, that kind of thinking. That's how the lowest level of animal forms think. Right? If you want to see stuff more clearly, you have to zoom out, zoom back up, and look at the bigger picture. Look at all the data. Right? And the truth is, being more technical, having, having more technique, is a requirement for a greater expression, <laughs> actually. So let's look at that part of it now, okay? To be more expressive, you cannot have single notes popping out here and there out of control. 
You have to have control to be expressive. Otherwise, what are you expressing? Are you, uh, unless you're trying to express primal scream, you know what primal scream is? It's like primal scream is that raw, raw human cry coming from your lizard brain. Unless you're trying to primal scream. And there are, yes, there's some musicians, that's, that's their whole thing. I'm not going to, and, I, and I, I don't see anything wrong with that either, right? Um, so we're not saying that not being expressive is a bad thing. What I'm pointing out here is really the hypocrisy of people saying they don't want to do they don't want to sound technical, so they don't practice stuff that will make them have more technique. But in the process, it makes them sound more technical. And, and that's what I'm talking about here. With the, when we have the um, musical playing, if you look at what musical playing is, it's the highest level of technique that we need the, because you the 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 amount of physical control you need over every single note every every aspect of that note that is amazing technique way beyond how fast can you play So when you don't have any technique, right? Those things stand out. You don't sound more musical. You sound like you have more character. That's not the same thing. I've talked about this in my lessons. I have to talk about this all the time with my students who have no technique. I want them to stand proud and confident. Because their lack of technique gives them character. Do not confuse character with expression. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not suggesting that you're a bad player if you play this way. No. I'm only pointing out the hypocrisy. People who say, I don't want to be more technical. Okay? When you're not more technical, you create this illusion of having more technique than you have musicianship. It's an irony that bites you on the butt, <laughs> right? So um, I think maybe sometimes these people confuse character with, with expression. Expression takes... The expression is much requires much more technique. Great levels of expression require so much more technique than your, than your most difficult concerto. Because of the minutia, right? Because of those tiny things that need to be controlled. It's the same level of technique as playing a... a, a a, a, a virtuosic solo. So I want you to think about that, right? You should never hold your technique back on purpose. That's like cutting off your leg because you don't want to, you don't want people to think you're an athlete. Let's cut off your leg. Okay? I mean, that's how ridiculous that is. That's how ridiculous it is. So, so think about this. If you happen to be one of those who says, um, and you know, this is this is not just f finger technique. It's not just finger technique. This has to do also with the range. We have a cat now, <laughs> and she's whining. Um, this has to do with range too. 
there are people who don't want to develop their range because they don't want to sound like one of those high note guys. But if you look at the history of high note players, you know, does someone who's playing the Brandenburg Concerto sound like he's playing high? We think of Maynard Ferguson, right? But the Brandenburg, or, or the let's use the Michael Haydn, right? The Michael Haydn Concerto has a, a B natural that's talking, uh, I think these are B flat notes that I'm talking. A B natural just a half step beneath the super C. That's the Michael Haydn, right? And um, that's more range than most of what Maynard Ferguson ever played. And if you listen to the Michael Haydn, it doesn't sound high. It doesn't sound like he's screaming, right? Having the extra range doesn't make you sound like a high note player. It's actually the opposite. What makes you sound like a high note player is the style that you play. If, and if you don't like that style, don't play like that. But why would you limit yourself range-wise for that kind of reason? Oh, I don't want to sound like a high note player. Well, that's going to make you sound like a high note player. You're going to get up to G above the staff, and you're going to have to play like Maynard to try to get it. That makes no sense at all. That makes no sense. You actually, to sound like you're not playing high, you have to have greater range technique. And there's more I could dig into in that, on that topic, right? Because I happen to believe that to have a great sound in the upper register is, in terms of technique, like the, the amount of control you need over your horn. That's some of the greatest technique you'll ever need in your lifetime. Because getting a good sound, it's, we're already talking about minutia. Getting a great sound is, deals with all minutia, right? The tiny, tiny subtle things that happen that you can't even perceive while you're playing. You can't even perceive those things that have to happen for you. That's why it has to be sourced from your subconscious mind. Because your, your conscious mind, did I say conscious? Subconscious mind. It, the great sound has to be sourced from your subconscious mind. Because your conscious mind cannot even detect those physical actions. You're not capable of that. Nobody is. But the same is true for high notes. So what you have for getting a great sound in the upper register is a compounded minutia. Minutia over the top of minutia. And it really demands that this stuff all come from your subconscious mind. That's the bottom line here. And if you're not going to feed your subconscious with technical drills, you will always sound technical. You will always sound, if you're playing the high notes, you will always sound like a screamer. The only way you can avoid that is to just never play anything above the staff, ever. And good luck with that, right? Anyway, I hope this, I'm rambling a little bit. There is a blog post on this, a short blog post. Um, but yes, one thing I didn't mention in the blog post, I might go back and fix it, is this thing that I started with saying that, that the um, technique and musicianship, the expression and technique are independent of each other in a sense in the sense that having one doesn't make you have not have the other does that make sense i have a, a blog uh 
behind the wheel video coming out on Saturday that talks about what you can do does not dictate what you cannot do. And this can be applied here just because you have technique does not imply that you cannot be musical. What a ridiculous notion. All right. Anyway, think about that. Um, I'm going to hang up. <laughs> hang up. Uh, I'm going to log off here and then start another video for next week. All right. Thank you for hanging out with me. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. I wanted to spend just a minute to let you know that there's a better, more convenient, more organized way to access all of these videos. We have literally hundreds of videos here on YouTube and, and quite frankly, it's, it's a bit of a mess. So to make it a little bit more organized and easier for you to access what you want to access, I created a separate page, a separate area on my website, that's eddielewis.com. And if you go to eddielewis.com, click on the menu, click on videos. It will take you there. I have the videos categorized. And then within those categories, some of them, like the, the educational videos, you can click on it and go in there and look for the videos specifically that you're looking for. Okay? So go to eddielewis.com, E-D-D-I-E-L-E-W-I-S.com. Thank you very much.